Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of gamefully unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. How do we start this? What's going on? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is David Bell. Uh, my name isn't. It's something different. It's Tom Ryman. That's correct. And we just watched Australians. Australians. Like, Aust- like, Austra- aliens. It's a, a, the aliens. alien part. It's, really, uh, it's a portmanteau, you see. Brisbane City is under aerial attack from what appears to be a non-terrestrial hostile force. I just got a distress mess from Dad. Andy, your mother kidnapped by aliens. Do not come to... <gasps> oh my God, they kidnapped Mom. So it's Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that means this is... Uh, uh, we just watched Classic. It's, it's from one of our patrons. In this case, it's from Chancy Pants. Mm, Chance in the Pants. Chance Pants. Thank mm. you... Thank you so much for your support. Indeed, sir. This is or, this is or lady. I'm. W- yeah. Thank I, you. I can't. You. <laughs> I can't confirm. I can't confirm. I didn't. I didn't ask. I never ask. Yep. I probably should ask. Should I ask? Uh, I don't. Th- I don't know. Okay. Uh, we good can, we can, That's good we, enough answer. Yeah. We we can um, use neutral pronouns. Yeah. I drank a coffee way too late tonight, Tom. Oh man, I've been uh, I've been crushing coke zeros all day Ooh, yeah yeah that sounds fun it's been a real hard day T- today as we're recording this was the launch of hbo max baby. oh yeah <laughs> well okay. brand new streaming content i think eric barnes tweeted that space ghost goes to coast is on hbo max it is uh, that, <laughs> that kind of seals it for me i might have to get H- hbo max just for that yeah I think they have the entirety of, well, not the entirety, but most of Cartoon Network and Adult Swim's library. Motherfuck. All right. Because it's, a, it's a, a Turner, which I think is owned by Time Warner, I think. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I, I read about that. I've been mostly just listening to punk songs about cops all day, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, no particular reason. No particular reason <laughs> to be listening to some body count and some leftover crack. It's just, uh, I was just in the mood. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, uh, what what are, what are we doing? Australians. Um, Australians. This is, this is a, a like an indie comedy uh, that comes out of I don't know some country. I'm mm-hmm. not sure which. Um, who can who can say? Who, who can, can say? say? It's like a 2015 or 14 film. I think 2014. Okay. I think it's about Australian. Wait, no, it's about Australia being invaded by aliens yes hence the name uh what did what did you what was what were your thoughts on this um i in, I, I enjoyed it mostly i thought it was a little too long same but, uh, that's my biggest criticism yeah it's almost two hours long which is a little too long for a low budget sci-fi comedy i um, would argue the ending like the standoff is where i was like this is dragging come on mm-hmm. like, yeah uh, that that you could you could have yeah, you could have cut five minutes out of that ending. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I also enjoyed it. Did you notice that um, the lead actress was also in Red Curtain Hell, that other Australian I movie did. we watched? I did. She was great in Red Curtain Hell. Um, I liked her in this. I liked her better in Red Curtain Hell, I think. But she she was she was solid in this as well. This, mm-hmm. yeah, this, uh, I mostly enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, same. Yeah, it, it it had three types of jokes for me. Jokes jokes that didn't land at all, but were mm-hmm. like they didn't they weren't harming anybody. Jokes right. that I really liked the idea of but still didn't land. Mm-hmm. And then jokes that landed really hard <laughs> on me. <laughs> yeah, there's yep, same, hard yeah. same. I didn't uh, I didn't roll my eyes at any jokes, but definitely yeah, not all of them landed, but I was like, "Oh, that's cute." Yeah, <laughs> it it uh <laughs> It, the first like i don't know 10 minutes i was a little nervous because i was like man none of this is working uh, oh yeah the opening scene with the little kids was rough oh yeah the little <laughs> the, the dad who looks like kenny loggins um, <laughs> yeah, 
just for no reason. Yeah. Well, that got funny when I realized like that that yeah. was a bit. Yeah. Yeah. The the family like debating about the existence of aliens and the kids the kids weren't great. No. Uh, no. And then uh, the part with the band was okay. It's it's about a it's a band where the lead singer she as a kid saw an alien spacecraft, and then she has they have like a unsuccessful band where she rants about seeing aliens and how they gave her powers Mm -hmm. and then aliens show up and so she makes it all about herself assuming that they're after her uh and that i liked that dynamic i like that the aliens just were attacking australia yeah well (laughs) i liked i really liked the ultimate reveal of why they're there oh yeah that was (laughs) that that was pretty terrific she she had a little alien balloon that she drew an alien face on and her cousin while she was asleep wrote alien suck balls on the back of Mm -hmm. it and And the aliens got the balloon (laughs) yeah they did a good job with that because at the beginning when she sees the ship she accidentally lets go of the balloon but you don't think anything of it right and the reveal (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's just that it says alien suck balls and when yeah, they, was, and when they really leave, solid. they leave that giant sign in the ocean that says aliens don't suck balls. Yeah. After <laughs> blowing up uh, uh, Tasmania. T- Tasmania, yeah. Yeah, that was solid. <laughs> I, feel like that's, I feel like that was a funnier joke if you live in Australia, but I, I found it quite funny. Yeah. Because they pay it off. Because the band is like, there's there's a band called Tasmania? Is there's, that right? There's a, yeah, there's another band that she really resents called the Tasmaniacs. Yeah. Um, That's and it. they they keep doing a bit about Tasmania, like it's like only Australia is affected, and like the aliens haven't gone to Tasmania, so she just keeps getting more and more frustrated with the right. idea of Tasmania. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I the opening uh, the opening game sort of reminded me. Her rant about aliens reminded me of um, seeing the UK subs, and the lead singer was extremely drunk. And and he pointed out we were in like at a beach and he pointed out the ocean and screamed about how something's dying out there and everybody turned around and couldn't see it. and he's like no you can't see it now but it's it's out there man we're killing it we're killing it man and the crowd was just like weird and confused <laughs> yeah. and I I kind I wish that more bands had like weird conspiracy theories or disjointed statements oh, during yeah. their. Uh, Sets. Yeah, it's it's always it's always fun when when the lead singer will break in between songs or sometimes during songs, right? And just g- go on a rant that completely loses the audience. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Especially if they're inebriated and like you can tell the band is having a lot of trouble with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like this wasn't part of the plan. They're nope. they're they're minutes away from an intervention. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna do one later that night at yeah. the hotel oh yeah you're watching you're watching like the, yeah the last straw um the first thing that really made me laugh was the guy who says i have a lump on my pants and she replies with it's called a dick yeah. i liked that one yeah um i liked private function where he punches the guy there's some good there's some good physical comedy mm-hmm. the thing that uh, i laugh really fucking hard when her dad shoots that guy like 15 times oh that was so good that was a great bit <laughs> the guy just he, she when he walks in and just riddles him with bullets because i really liked there's a whole subplot not subplot but a whole part bit where one of their friends gets uh kidnapped or by an alien and who assumes his identity yeah and he's so obviously an alien right he's, <laughs> and, he's, his skin is green and he's moving all weird and he has this like fucking bizarre like laugh it's just yes. it's just like alien screeching he's it's just he's absolutely killing it as yeah. an alien it's it was a it was a it's a i mean it's an obvious gag to do but it was they still did it well and it's a fun gag yeah i it's think just, i think he sold it by being so weird right. uh <laughs> just so clearly an alien yeah um and like like i think that's when like that's where like the movie really picked up for me and yeah so they they finally find out he's an alien they defeat that alien and then the dad walks in because the other one is the dad has found out that he's an alien as well but the kidnapped version the real version is the room and the dad just unloads into him 
Yep. The dad was killing it. Yeah, the, uh, dad, the dad was pretty great. One of my my favorite things he did was when he like took off that rubber glove and slapped it across the wall, mm-hmm. like angrily. That really that really did it for me. Yeah. The biggest laugh I got was the fucking guy on a bike. Uh, that really <laughs> tickled me because it was one of those things that I get constantly annoyed with. They're being chased by aliens, and it's like an Independence Day world ending. And they, they cut to it at the right time where the guy's like, God damn it! And they cut, and there's just like one of those assholes on a bike blocking the road. Yeah. Uh, that, I, that really that really got me. Yeah, because the guy, he starts ranting. It's like, fuck, this is why I hate bike. And like in the middle of his rant about bicyclists, like his, his tight five about bicyclists taking <laughs> up the road, the aliens just fucking shoot him and he explodes into goo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he just very quietly turns the windshield wipers on. Right. Oh, yeah. His reaction was really good. Yeah. I like the gag where um, they like everybody's they're on their way to the to the school, which is where the alien invasion is is uh, centered. And like each of the characters, like they fall, falling asleep and they each wake up one by one. And she looks over and sees that the guy that's driving is also asleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good gags. It's very yeah. like National Lampoony. It's very like that. I think that was um, why it it almost took me a second to understand what type of movie I was watching. For sure, yeah. It's it's it takes about maybe fifteen minutes into the movie before I figured out what it what its tone was. Right, because I got heavy Shaun of the Dead vibes, and I think it could be yeah. compared to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's the humor isn't exactly that no it's more it's more silly than it's Shaun absurdist. of the Dead yeah the yeah, part like, at the end where she finds out she's part alien and she's yeah. like oh that's why I have three belly buttons and lifts and, up her shirt and this tail and this tail <laughs> just like a horrible slimy tail right it's very like at first my first note was like this humor is a little cartoony yeah uh, and then I realized like oh yeah it is that's that's the point and like that again that didn't always work with me uh but there's some like great silly where the dad's like the kid the aliens kidnapped your mom while i was hiding in that cardboard box and yeah. he points and there's a cardboard box that could maybe fit a fit a cat <laughs> like that just it's just tickled me just in the right way yeah it's so dumb yeah it's there's a lot of gags like that um yeah. i liked the way that they did the um when the the alien spaceship crashes and they go inside the barn to find the alien and the one lady is trying to figure out how to turn the light on on her camera and she turns on like like stop motion photo mode i wanted to talk about that because i thought that was extremely smart yeah for a few reasons one for an indie film that was a really good way of handling that yeah getting around the budget of an alien attack yeah because what happens is the camera we stay on the shot of the camera screen uh and so you see like the the photo mode the slideshow mode so you just keep you hear them screaming and like being attacked by an alien and and you only see like still images of what's happening yeah it's pretty good yeah it makes for a very good bit Mm -hmm. uh that's actually that that's one of the parts of this film where i saw some of the most talent which is oddly enough the special effects because they were weirdly good yes and i think i know why i've had this conversation with uh abe abe from yep. from small beans uh you know you know abe tom do you know abe i do i do know okay. abe yes um which is that what makes cgi good and bad and why after jurassic park we still got bad cgi and i think we've had this conversation before tom mm-hmm. as well which is that it almost it almost always comes down to the lighting. Yes. Because the 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 surefire way to like be like, oh, that looks terrible, is to not match the lighting. And I looked up who did the special effects. It was also the director. And so this is a really good example of extremely good lighting in the special effects. And and what makes it neat is that the special effects is not high quality. No, but it works. Yeah, because of the lighting. Because mm-hmm. they do things like, for ex- the first time I notice is where they're running outside and she's like, let's take my van and the van explodes. Yeah. The explosion is is like clearly done in, in like 3D Studio Max or something like that. It's, it's 
it's not perfect and and the fan exp- like the physics of the explosion it like crumbles in a weird way mm-hmm. um like it's a little sci-fi channel however they light her with the explosion uh they do a flash on her that sinks great with the explosion there's smoke there's fire um flickering off of her it all f- matches mm-hmm. and so it was like i rewound it because i was like that looked really good why did that look good and bad at the same time? And I was like, oh, because the person who were, was making this knew how to film it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just didn't have the budget, you know, that a Hollywood film has. Yeah. The um, the alien mech suit was another example of that. Yeah. Where it's because- like, that, this clearly isn't real, and, it, and you, but it, the way it's the way they integrate it into the scene, it, it's it's very effective. Yeah. Everything was lit really properly even the the cgi alien which Mm -hmm. again looked looked uh bad quality as a cgi render and again i can't stress this enough it's like it looks the design looked good it's really just that they clearly didn't have the money that a big budget film did yeah um but they it was all lit in the scene like it was there it was really neat it kind of reminded me of i mean aesthetically the comparison's kind of obvious but mars attacks Yes, yeah. Because uh, it's that it's that style alien and everything like that. Yeah, they look. It's yeah, they look really extreme fifties sci-fi. Yeah, I really like the alien torture scene where they're throwing salt on him. Yep. While fighting, that yeah. was really solid. Um, yeah, this uh, I I've never heard. I I think these people were involved with that other thing we watched. Um, uh, I looked. I only saw that the actress was. I don't know if any of the filmmakers were involved. I think there's an overlap with. Um, I'm looking up the director because this seems like kind of like they they have something called Toon Sandwich that's on the a, a, an internet series, and the Void. I think this is like kind of a comedy group, mm-hmm. is my guess. Okay. Uh, uh the, and like uh, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of I've never heard of them. And I wonder how big they are in, in like, you know, Australia. Australia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I should look into them more because they're definitely, yeah, there's, there was a lot of talent here. Yeah. It was a, it was a charming little film. Yeah. Uh, uh, mostly, most of my notes are just shit that made me laugh. Yeah, pretty much. Like um, my, like we said at the top, my only real criticism is that it's too long. Yeah, I would say that they had trouble with, there's like, I'm trying to think of how to, how to explain like where, where, how the jokes that didn't land, why they didn't land. Uh, and I think it's maybe that they take it too far, like, or they, they kind of stretch out a joke a little too much. Uh, yeah. I think of like when the alien, when they're um, interrogating the alien Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he, uh, they're like, how did you learn English? And he was like, well, he took classes. Yeah. And there's almost like a family guy-esque joke where they cut to an English class and they they cut to the alien with eyebrows and a mustache. I found that delightful. Yeah. It Uh, was really, it was really stupid. Yeah. It was really (laughs) stupid. And also, I love the hard cut where he's going and like making some sort of sound. But then there's the in between where he says like, "Where are you from?" And he says, "Outer space." I mean, I mean, I forget where he says he's from. Uh, China, I think. China. And then the teacher's like, "Oh, that would be so absurd if you were from outer space or something like that." And that's the part where I'm like, "You don't need that. The joke's yeah. already there." And I think a lot of it comes from that. It, it comes from like taking a joke that's funny and not quite knowing uh when to when to quit yeah yeah definitely that's the case with the standoff at the end for sure yeah although it's it's weird because it's not like one it's not like okay you need to cut it early it's more like you need to condense like i really liked roy from city yeah. council <laughs> yeah. they're doing this standoff and like the bit the bit is that people keep interrupting the state right, like right when he's about to the bad guy's about to shoot them somebody will say not so fast and it happens like three times right which isn't the best joke 
No, but um, but the it fact works. That, right, the fact that they were built like I was getting a little. I was like, okay, like I get it, but like when they. The, the fact that they build up to Roy from city council just showing up. Right. And then Roy's at the end too. And they're all yeah, like cheering. He's celebrating at the end. <laughs> Roy was solid. Yeah. Um, the, I also like when the guy's turning into stone and they cut to the dad laughing. Where everybody else is gasping. <laughs> that, that fucking killed me. Yeah. Everybody else is horrified. And the dad's just laughing. <laughs> yeah. That was really good. <laughs> Oh, everything he did was pretty strong. Yeah, yeah that da- he had like he had like less less annoying Ricky Gervais energy. Yeah. Where like where like he had that same energy, but I liked it, I liked him more than him. Yeah. Um, it the other okay the other the other issue I had with this film, I guess, mm-hmm. is at the very end, uh, they do this thing where. Um, like the brother is like, oh, I have dirt on me, and I don't care, and the and everybody has a arc. Yeah. Did you pick up on the arc before that moment? That he's a germaphobe. Yeah. They mention it a few times, but okay. It, it what the impression I got is that like I felt like they tried a little too hard on the arcs. They felt very um, like the exposition in arcs is a lot of characters just saying stuff out yes. loud yeah and not like doing like that's one of those arcs that like you just have to show him getting dirty and not be bothered by it you know mm-hmm. i didn't even realize that that was an arc on the character as he was a germaphobe and then he gets over it and not that it's like even a big i don't know it, it there's definitely a lot of issues with character and story i thought yeah yeah like it's just sort of um like what what endeared me to it is uh mostly just i don't know the, that they were funny like yeah. i was i was more enjoying the the actors mm-hmm. as comedic performances yeah than i was thinking about the characters yeah no no that's <clears throat> like you said they could condense a lot <clears throat> we didn't necessarily need for everybody to have an arc I and mean, there's there were you know there's better ways to pull that off but Right, but I guess what I mean is that, like, yeah, it, there was no, like, there was no arc that I cared about. There was no relationships that I cared about. It's I was rooting for these characters because I liked the bits they were doing, yeah, as opposed I, to being invested in the story. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I don't. I mean, it's it's fine that they reveal that the the friend that's been filming the whole time is now going to have like. It has has like this this groundbreaking documentary now and is going to be like a filmmaker. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't need that. Like I was still yeah. I was still didn't... on board with the characters just because, like you said, they're they're all doing a great job. Yeah, I also thought that was a weird payoff. Is I thought like like I I think of like Shaun of the Dead where uh, because I I you know that's again the easy comparison where yeah. You start with the character's like kind of a loser and then they go they go on this adventure and at the end they're kind of a loser, but they've marginally improved a part of their life. Mm-hmm. Uh and that's what it's about. It's about like a small small incremental change. Uh and this they like try to make them t- almost too heroic. The idea that that character is gonna be an amazing documentary filmmaker, it was like, well, they don't uh, they don't really show that she's that good at it um and it feels like like it feels like a birdemic situation yeah where in birdemic the character is way more successful than uh, they they like they're just like on tv they're just like at home watching it on the news a news anchor talking about how successful they are at the end yeah which is uh, after we specific like her band takes off and it's like we specifically hear at the beginning of the movie that this band is trash like their songs are bad right that's the joke and i thought they were gonna pay that off with like and made their 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 new band came out with the album and it's not doing great you know but instead they're (laughs) like and it's selling online and it's like wait why is it selling online yeah they're awful (laughs) yeah i think they're a terrible band yeah (laughs) yeah that's the joke (laughs) yeah I think the resourcefulness that they did 
in the special effects they needed to have for the scale of the plot, if that makes sense. Yeah. I agree um, with that. Yeah. Where, like, they didn't need, like, them to be all rich and famous at the end because they can no. only shoot in, like, a living room. Yeah. And it's like, well, that doesn't look like you're rich and famous. Yeah. And I think, I think what I would have done, I don't know. Now I'm trying to I'm trying to like give this movie notes and like it's really it's a really delightful no, uh, movie. Yeah, I'm just like I really I'm not sure if they could have done like a I don't know like a no I guess not because wrapping uh, like I was gonna say like I also like the version of this where someone thinks it's about them because the whole thing is that the main character she thinks it's all about her. Mm, yeah. And I thought they were going to subvert that. And they do, where it is all about her, but not for the reasons she thinks. Right. It's because of a balloon that's an alien suck ball. Yeah. And that has a uh, <laughs> picture of the alien on the front, and she's yeah. like, "This a, it's a perfect drawing of me. Yeah, it was pretty solid. Yeah. I really like that guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what I really... I love the dad's story. The dad is really the MVP here. The whole the, the reveal is that the dad is like an agent uh, mm -hmm. who saw an alien and took it to Shed Fifty One, which I thought was delightful. Yeah. Uh, and uh, oh yeah, the dad. Sorry, it's a tangent. The the dad asking where did we first meet to his daughter mm -hmm. also delighted me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which is kind of foreshadowing because the dad didn't first meet her. Wait, no, he did. Right, yeah, he the did. idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's her dad. Um, but yeah, so the dad is a agent who who was working on this alien, and so he knows a lot about aliens. And then the reveal is that the dad is actually the alien, and the aliens can look like anybody else. So the alien was like played dead. I really this they didn't make a big thing of this. Is the alien story is that it crashed, it lived with a family for a while. Um, we didn't need they didn't need that family. No. Um, but what was funny is that then he goes and I pretended to be dead and the agents bust in and he's like on their couch and just pretends to be dead. Yep. <laughs> they don't make a big deal of that, but that was very funny. I also like that he had a beard. Yeah, like that his, he had a beard. The, the alien version has a beard. <laughs> that was another thing. They didn't draw any attention to it. It was nope. just like, and he has a beard. It's really fucking strange. Yeah. <laughs> that this alien has a beard. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, the alien then played dead until the autopsy and then we had to fess up and gives the guy giving him a heart uh, uh, autopsy a heart attack and so assumes his identity and eats the body eats his body yeah <laughs> which I loved the eating the body where they <laughs> they show him eating the body and it's not like it's not like an, uh, the way an alien would it's like a it's like a task. Yeah, he's just sitting there, just power. It's like, <laughs> like it's like if we were eating a body. It's, it's right. It doesn't look like a good experience. <laughs> no, <laughs> just to no. sit there and eat this entire body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's just like it's it's like going to like 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 the the uh, Texas steakhouse where they give you the challenge steak. Like yeah. it's just like he's just like powering through it, having a real tough time. Yeah, and it says like I saved a little for the next day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrific oh man <laughs> yeah um yeah i like that whole i like that whole journey um i like the journey of the, the way you mentioned the guy the friend getting shot and then getting shot again yeah yep i didn't think they needed the final one i don't know where he falls into the cooler i don't know there was something very funny to me about a uh, a wine cork hitting a man in the throat yeah i think i've said this before i think the throat is the funniest place to get hit <laughs> yeah, it is it is uh statistically it's the funniest part of the human body to get hit in yeah uh, uh, because <laughs> do we have to explain this i, I no feel... i think we, i think people will just understand they'll just be able to really? intuit that yeah okay it's the sounds it's the fact that you could be talking or so it's just the sound yeah. you make I don't know. It's also the most. It's also one of the most critical places to get hit. <laughs> yeah, which doesn't make it seem like it would be very fun at all. But it. It. I don't know. I'm. I. 
it gets me every single time. Yeah, just 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 throw in a solid throat chop mid sentence. It'll yeah. Fuck it, I'll be on the floor. Yeah, where they go, oh, and like fall <laughs> over. Because <laughs> it's like you you might have died, but you've also died in the least dignified way. <laughs> Your last words are a weird gargle. It's the same, like, I think it's the same, like, total shutdown, like, complete debilitation where you have to focus on it as, get it, as like, getting kicked in the balls. But it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's way less overused. Yeah, that's the thing is the balls is so obvious. I like, they did yeah. a balls joke in this where the alien yeah. has testicles on its neck. And it was on his throat. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, but they don't have, like balls on the neck it's not men in black too uh but it's it's it, yeah, it's it wasn't bad it's the combination of the two but yeah you're right is that balls is another one where it's like the body has to stop and address it yeah the <laughs> body's like problem yeah it's red alert all hands to <laughs> balls you know like every everything needs to go we need to focus we gotta focus uh, on these balls all our strength <laughs> And the throat is the same way, only, again, a lot darker. Uh, but it, I don't know. There's just, I think maybe side of the neck is also funny. I don't find back of the neck that funny. No, it's got to be the throat. Yeah, it's it's got to be, I think, throat or throat adjacent. Uh, it really is the funniest place. I can't even think of where else is funny. Like the stomach, stomach is all right. But it's yeah. it's... It's no throat. It's no throat. <sighs> it's, just, it's just no throat chop. Yeah. Uh, uh, this was another bit I've never seen before. Is I really liked the... Um, they're really good at like throwaway jokes in this. Yes. The bit where they... Um, where they, uh, 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 they... They pull over and they think one of them's an alien and they do this whole standoff... I like the um, they they they're quizzing everybody but the obvious alien, uh, yeah. And then and then she's like, "What?" Uh, they finally get to him and say, "What's your favorite color?" And he says, "Green." And they're like, "You told me it was blue." And he goes, "I recently switched to green." <laughs> I recently, and they, yeah, yeah. And they just accept it. And then and then the bit was uh, her saying, "All right, well, we got we got a long we got a long ways to go. We got to get going. Oh, wait. And looks over and they're in front of the house. She's like, Oh, never mind. We're here. Yeah. I really like that bit. They it did was... good. They, I, they did some good, like throwaway, um, like plot bits, like landfill bits in, in, uh, in a beer fest, beer fest. And that, I guess that's, that's, that's why I can see this movie not working on everybody. Because yeah. it, we've talked about this before. We talked about this, I think, with um, loaded weapon and slapstick, which is that like there's a specific line. We talked about this uh, last last episode actually with the the lovebirds. Would you say this is better or worse than the lovebirds? Um, I appreciated the comedy more in this than I did in lovebirds. Okay, well, because lovebirds was on this line too, and I feel <clears throat> like this kind of went to the right side of it, which is that. And uh, and again, this is why it's different than Shaun of the Dead. It's how absurd do you make it? Can mm -hmm. you throw away entire plot points uh, for the sake of comedy? And yeah. I think this is, uh, with Slapstick, this is the riskier choice. But I think what this movie tried to do mm -hmm. that bothered me is they try, they, not as much as the Lovebirds, uh, which we talked about, like getting kicked with a horse, uh, but they they did the thing. They 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 spent a little time trying to make me care about the character arcs, mm -hmm. and I don't know. I just I I didn't had no interest. Yeah, I think I they could have. I think they almost could have want gone more absurd. Yeah, maybe it's already pretty silly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, I get. I don't know. I don't know if I would have liked it as much if it was a full-on spoof. No, I, I, yeah. Like I like it. There's still like there, there are there are still like some straight man moments, right? Where it's not full naked gun. Yeah. Oh yeah. I guess that's true. It doesn't have to be full naked gun. I'm talking about like character arcs, which is that I think it's really hard to have a character arc mm -hmm. that's internal, 
which is like, I'm a germaphobe. Now I'm not mm-hmm. uh, in a, in a absurd comedy because it's almost too complex. Like that's why it's, I think it's, like it's, the naked. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to demonstrate uh, particularly in this kind of movie without the character just fucking stopping and saying, I am a germaphobe. <laughs> right. And it, yeah. it, it's also like, character is it's harder to nail down character when everybody's being absurd yeah uh and they're very much absurd sir they're they're the part like the 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 part where they sort of cross a line and it's not a bad line um where it's where they don't know their friend is an obvious alien it's like okay these people are very stupid yeah um and so you have to like you either have to make them stupid in a equally stupid and absurd world or you make them stupid in a smart world, and that's the point. And the fact that they find success at the end has to be earned in some way, or or not at all, like the ending of Dumb and Dumber. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, like, I think it just needed to be like it's weird to say. Like, I I feel like they just needed to dumb down the arcs. Like, it should have just been like we need our band to be famous, and our band isn't famous, or like just like a romantic subplot or something like that. Like, I didn't need much from that. Mm-hmm. I just needed a bunch of bullshit jokes and like a, 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 a razor thin uh, character journey yeah, to get me there. Yeah. But overall, yeah. I really like this. I think people should watch it. Yeah. We had to watch it on Tubi. Tubi. What is, <laughs> uh, what's Tubi? I don't know. It's a, it's a streaming service that's, it's free, but it's ad supported. So there were, we had to watch commercials with this Not, movie. Yeah. I watched like two commercials though. It was, uh, Tubi did not was not uh, intrusive for me. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. There was maybe three or four commercial breaks for me, but oh, okay. But it was. I mean, it's whatever. It's fine. I'm glad I didn't have to. It's it's nice to not have to drop five dollars on a rental. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, uh, if there's a way to watch this, I had to watch it at my computer. That's my only criticism of the the Tubi experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luckily, I had the I have the app on my smart TV, so I was able to watch it on TV like an adult. Oh, look at you! Yeah, Mr. yeah. Mr. Fucking fancy mm. over here. I am with your, with your Tubi app. Yep, I put I, I I put my solid gold shoes up on my mm-hmm. uh, on my marble coffee table and watched Tubi on my television. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, I see how this is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we'll, we're gonna come for you <laughs> in the class <laughs> war, Tom. In the class war, don't just yeah. you wait. Sure. Yeah. Well, until uh, until then, I'll be relaxing with my solid gold shoes and your tubi <laughs> and my tubi. Yeah. Um. No, I I know you didn't like the lovebirds as much as me. I I I've already forgotten about the lovebirds, so that's not a great yeah, sign. When when you, when you mentioned we talked about this last episode, I literally had forgotten what movie we watched. Yeah. But I <laughs> I, rec- I kind of recommend this the same way as the lovebirds, which is that like. If you want something that's like just kind of fun and dumb, uh, this is this is it. Like the again, the, the it's very it's very dumb. It uh, is. The it's jokes. extremely stupid. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and I know you, I. Uh, oh shit! What is it called? Hmm. Eh, it doesn't matter. Um, like I'm trying to think of commies to compare it to, because it's it's like it's not quite like a Naked Gun slapstick. No, it's almost sillier than that it's like the the jokes are the jokes are like all right it's it's the jokes are like a hammer as opposed to like a scalpel (laughs) sure you know it just like hits you on the head with it Mm -hmm. um but that's just as fucking effective yeah um but i can't i i could just see a lot of people watching this and being like i don't find this funny at all you know (laughs) yeah uh and i would not blame a person for not finding it funny i found it very funny yeah at a lot of times yeah I, I i really enjoyed most of it yeah yeah <laughs> just to cut into hit that the dad laughing <laughs> the guy that was dying. fucking that was fucking amazing <laughs> because that like I, I i don't know even how to describe this is that like the they have a ray that turns someone into stone which by the way the that effect looked great lighting wise uh yeah. and it turns the bad guy into stone and he's slowly turning the stone and they keep cutting to everybody else looking horrified and this horrible thing is happening and it cuts to the dad and for no reason he's just like ha ha, ha. <laughs> he's just and like, laughing they, his ass off yeah and like he's sort of that kind of character but also not really <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's it's just it's just wonderful. Yeah. Oh man. It's a lot of great bits. I think <laughs> the bits that didn't land are bits where I'm like, I, I really like this idea, but you're not your timing or something's not quite making me laugh. Mm-hmm. Um and then the other things are like, oh there it is. Uh yeah. it's it's man. I like the bit where the kid's embarrassed by his dad. Yeah. Uh, when the world's ending, his dad's, his dad, like, they do a couple of these jokes where they're like, the, they're, they're being attacked by aliens. And the dad is like, pulls up and he's like, son, get in the van. And he's like, ah, oh, daddy, you said I could hang out with my friends. Yep. And that was a good bit. Oh man. Uh, yeah. A lot of bits, you guys. Yeah. It's, it's just a movie filled with bits. Yeah, pretty much. It's like a sketch comedy. Uh, Kind of, it's, it's like still, a series of sketch. Like I could see you could split a lot of these scenes up. Into yeah, but just they, sketches. they were still like it, it. Still felt more organic than something like the Lovebirds. Like I oh didn't, yeah, like I, well, I never I never felt like the movie was coming to a halt to do a to do one of these bits. They all stem from what's happening in the story. Right. That's actually a very interesting observation because you're right. Is that this is less random than the mm-hmm. lovebirds a lot yeah. of the time yeah uh they they you're right is they're all kind of situational mm-hmm. like and a lot of it's somewhat de- somewhat uh delivery based um and it definitely it definitely feels inspired by like Shaun of the dead it's just that they couldn't yeah for sure it's like Sh- it's like Shaun of the dead without restraint where it's yeah. like it's not just these are funny people in an apocalypse it's like the world is absurd. Yeah, every, everything is funny. Like the yeah, rules the of this world are, are different. Funny. Yeah, yeah. Like the uh, alien. The alien has jokes. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and that's and it, it. Yeah, that that was the only thing. It took me a second to to realize that's what I was seeing because. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Shaun of the Dead was the very first thing I thought of, and then yeah, as, as you, it went on, I was like, oh, this isn't quite that. Yeah, you get those heavy vibes right away, and then when you start like. You have to like stop thinking of it as a movie that's you, trying to be Shaun of the Dead because it's clearly not. It's just mm-hmm. kind of inspired by yeah. the success of Shaun of the Dead. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think that happened a lot. Like, what was that movie, Grabbers? Yes. Uh, and that's a good movie. I remember that being a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there was a Shaun of the Dead effect, though, where like a lot of indie filmmakers saw the success of Shaun of the Dead and was like, well, shit, let's make a comedy horror that stands out uh one of the dead one of the dead is really good i don't know if you saw that i I have not seen one of the dead no oh okay like it's it's more that there was a little bit of oversaturation but in that there's a lot of really good movies that stood out and i also don't know if that's fair because i don't think they're like copycats i think they just saw the success Mm -hmm. of something like that and said well shit I have this idea or like maybe the movies already existed. I don't know, but it's like, I don't know. I think, I think that, I don't know. I think that caused a lot, a lot of um, people looking to be the next show yeah. of the dead. Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely for sure. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely closer to when it came out in 2004. Yeah. And have you ever looked at the, like the cover art for grabbers? Mm-mm. There's two versions um, and one of them is clearly a producer who's like, make it more like Shaun of the Dead. And the other one is just like a horror one. Like, like you mm-hmm. can see that, you can see that like clear, um, that clear rift mm-hmm. where like one person was like, no, sell it like a horror movie. And the other is like, no, sell it like Shaun of the Dead. Uh, and like, that's, that's the, I think the most clear comparison. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, good movie. Yeah. I don't have any other thoughts. I mean, other than just sitting no, here and I mean, pointing I out sit, bits yeah, that I, was, I like. I was gonna say, I can sit here and list things <laughs> yeah, just that happen the, on here it. Here are the funny things in this movie. I want to I wanna reiterate the most interesting part of this film to me, though, was the special effects, um, yeah. which I, did, I thought were, was going to be the least exciting part. Yeah. But the special effects is like surprisingly good for the budget mm-hmm. um, in a way that shows talent. It's just a very good example of of that lighting effect with CGI. Yeah. Where like you can have all the money in the, you can make Lake Placid, but it just actually, Lake, sorry, Lake Placid actually has some good CGI. Uh, you can make, I don't know, the Langoliers. That's yeah. probably not a great example. That is terrible CGI. 
Yeah, but I would say the CGI in the Langoliers is on par with this movie in terms of uh, the detail. Actual, the actual rendering quality, yeah. It's not far. Yeah, but since this is better lit, it looks ten times better. So yeah, it's kind of interesting for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, uh, big thanks to Chancy Pants. Thanks, Chance in the Pants. Chance in the Pants for uh, for for sending this our way. And for dropping um, this nugget on us. Mm-hmm. If uh, if people are interested, uh, this is this is part of a tier of our Patreon. It is. Yeah, and that uh, that 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 Patreon is patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. There's other exclusive podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman and Fox Mulder is a maniac. This is you can all check true. that out. Yeah, all true. Uh, would I lie? No, you wouldn't. Certainly I'm not, not to liar. these fine people. Yeah. Uh, we also have a store tpublic.com slash stores slash gamefully unemployed. We have t-shirts, posters, stickers, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so. there's 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 masks so you can hide your face for the inevitable class war. Mhm. When you guys come for my Tubi. Mhm. Yeah, we can come come for your Tubi. <laughs> Sitting here lighting cigars with $100 bills watching Tubi. <laughs>